friends, this is Lulu Sketches. In case you're new here, I'm an artist at Disney TV Animation. I'm a background painter on Tangled the Series, and I also do characters and visual development. So I draw and paint a lot of characters, and I get a lot of comments about how I draw and paint hair. So this is just a little tutorial on how I draw and paint hair. Enjoy. I love drawing and painting hair. I draw hair in a lot of different ways. I don't stick to one consistent style. So here's a few examples of hair that I've drawn and painted. This is all art that I post over on my Instagram. So if you wanna see these drawings and more, check out my Instagram account, Lulu Sketches. So let's get into it. To start, make a new layer. I always draw hair on a separate layer than the rest of the line art. Here are a few things that I think about when I'm drawing hair. First, the hairline. Remember that hair is growing out of the head, not just lying on top. Whether you're drawing short hair or long hair, it's important to think about the hairline. Some have cowlicks, where part of the hair grows in a different direction than the rest. And now I'm going to draw another hairline that does not have a cowlick. This girl is lucky as hell to not have a cowlick. She can easily have bangs that fall flat across her forehead, which makes me jealous of her because I have a massive cowlick and I could never have bangs like that. Some hairlines have widow's peaks. Some hairlines are receding. And don't forget the bit of hair beside the ear. Whether you're drawing a male or female character, the hairline usually starts beside the ear. And next, hair has weight. Gravity pulls hair down. Always remember the hair roots. The heavier the hair is, the more it's going to pull down on that root. If you're drawing hair with a side part, there's more hair and more weight on one side. I personally like to draw hair lock by lock. I like to think of the weight of each hair section. Bigger locks will have more weight and smaller locks will be lighter. Wet hair is heavier because the water weighs down the hair and it brings the hair closer to the skull. If you're drawing hair underwater, it will look weightless and float.
And next, hair types. There are all kinds of hair types. A hair can be straight, curly, wavy, textured, thick, thin. There are so many different hair types. Using hair to amplify personality traits can add a lot to a character design. If you're going for one hair type in particular, it helps to Google photo references. Here is how I would draw straight, thin hair. It's going to lie flat and it's going to be close to the skull. And here is some wavy, thicker hair. It's further from the skull since it has more volume. And here is how I would draw soft curly hair. So this character has softer, more natural looking curls. This girl's ponytail is a perfect curl. It looks like it was done with a curling iron. Kind of like the Betty Cooper look if you watch Riverdale. Yes, I somehow brought Riverdale into my hair drawing tutorial. That show is a mess and I can't stop watching it. So if you wanna draw curls and you're having trouble, it helps to think about hair locks as ribbons. Draw the hair as if you're drawing a ribbon curling. And next for drawing hair, hairstyles. There are all kinds of hairstyles. Your characters most likely won't be wearing their hair the same way all the time, unless they have very short hair. If your character has long hair, think about how they would wear it. In a messy bun, a ponytail, braids. I especially love drawing braids. There are all kinds of braids. French braids, Dutch braids, fishtail braids, waterfall braids. There are shortcuts to simplify or stylize braids in cartoons. 
but I personally like to fully draw braids, which is much easier if you understand how a braid works. If you don't know how to make a simple braid with your hands, look up a braiding tutorial. Knowing how the hair is actually folded will help you understand how to draw it. If you're still having trouble visualizing, look up photo references for braids too. Now watch me struggle to draw a side French braid for the first time, trying to figure out where all of the correct hair strands go. Drawing French braids is kind of like trying to solve a puzzle. Before painting, I like to make the hair line art a similar color that I'm painting the hair. Make a clipping mask, make a new layer, hold down the option key, and click in between those two layers. And I set that line art layer to multiply. This will ensure that the line art will blend nicely since there are a lot of different tones in hair. When painting anything, I tend to paint the dark tones first and then add light. The hair is going to look most dense near the root where all the hair strands are close together. Then the rest of the painting layers for the hair, I will clip to my solid dark layer with clipping mask. If there are any areas that will be in shadow, I add those usually with a multiply layer. Then I start adding light. On top of my dark tones, I like to start with mid-tones and build up to my highlights. If you want to make the hair look glossy, make sure to paint and shine where the light hits the hair. Hair also tends to have some natural highlights from the sun, especially the wispy hair that frames the face. The hair I paint comes out differently every time. There's not one correct way to paint hair. Add whatever darks and likes you feel like and don't overthink it. Just keep it loose, experiment, look up lots of references if you're having trouble and have fun with it.
helpful. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos. Bye.